Castle Bar We successfully detangle every head every time with Oh, patience, persistence, prayer and faith Oh, remember with God all things are possible Matthew 19, 26 Why we only use the takedown remover. As you can see from the pictures, having severely matted tangled hair can make you very sad and even cause depression. It keeps your hair in bondage. Using the takedown remover is crucial to saving hair when transitioning from style to style, as well as detangling very matted tangled hair. This product has been in use since 1999. And for our hairdressers, it is the only solution for safe and easy removal of braids, weaves, hair extensions, dreadlocks, and matted tangled hair. With this product, we successfully detangle every head, every time. Detangling hair requires patience, persistence, prayer, and faith. Remember, with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, verse 26. Getting rid of tangled, matted hair is possible. Tangled and matted hair is not a simple problem. To solve it, most people just go to a salon. Unfortunately, most salons and hairdressers only want to cut your hair. If you are hospitalized or ill for months, it's difficult to take care of your hair. In such cases, hair becomes matted and tangled, which looks and feels very dreadful. Moreover, it's painful to simply start combing without any expert assistance. We only use the takedown remover cream to soften and moisturize dry hair and to remove knots, clumps, tangles and mats. We do not use conditioner, glycerin, detangler sprays or water-based products to detangle very matted tangled hair. It makes the hair worse. Don't lose hope. We successfully detangle every head. Patience, persistence, prayer and faith. Remember, with God all things are possible. Matthew 19.26 We successfully detangle every head every time with Oh, patience, persistence, prayer and faith Oh, remember with God all things are possible Matthew 19, 26 we successfully detangle hair with patience, persistence and prayer. With God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. Okay, we're getting ready to detangle um, um, a client's hair. As you can see, the different types, of, it's kind of like matted in different sections here. We've got some little mats here. We've got more of a matted clump here. And then we've got this section. Um, it could take a day and a half or it could take two full days. Um, first, we're going to go ahead and ask the client how long it's been tangled. And then from there, um, we'll go ahead and get started um, with prepping and beginning to detangle. Okay, so how long was your hair um, tangled, ma'am? So the hair, the way it is now, probably within the last six, seven months. Okay. Before, it was just the one on the bottom. And then everything else just tangled. With it within the last six months. Really well. Okay, so it's been about six months or so. It started out with just the one on the bottom you said right here, yes. and then it increased. It just right. kind of started matting further down to the roots of your hair. Yes. Um, so it's been about six, seven months. Um, can you just briefly explain to us how it started, um, and and what made you wait to allow a professional to detangle your hair? I think I was just more frustrated with myself and you know I was going through a really hard time and so my self-esteem was out the window so I didn't really even think about taking care of it as much as the first thing I was really thinking about is chopping it off. The only person that really told me not to do it was my mother and that's the only reason why. 
because my mother likes my hair more than I like my own hair. So she was the one that was pretty much telling me, you need to find a way not to chop your hair and fix this. Yes. So she was the person that actually helped me with this. Great. Um, is there anything that you put on your hair to try and do it yourself? Any products? Anything? Um, Just to kind of let people understand, because when you're waiting to get your hair um, de uh, detangled before you find a solution or to find a professional, sometimes you try to put things on it yourself. Did you do any of any, any products? Anything that you did? Yeah, Just to help just like in training conditioners. hair. Conditioners. I think that's what one of my girlfriends tried to help me. She she tried to use conditioning products just to help loosen the mats, but, you know, she doesn't, I mean, we're, our hair expertise is just as good as the next person, average person, so we don't know what else to do, we're just trying to figure things out. Okay, all right, no worries. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and begin now. We're going to, of course, um, use um, the takedown remover. We're going to soak it on first, and then we're going to wrap as usual. The hair, and then we'll put some, apply some heat, and then from there we'll start, of course, the process of picking and find, finding finding a point of entry to um, get into her hair, get into the back. And there's no rhyme or reason, as you can see. No, no there's no system that oh, kind of mat it this way, mat it that way. No, they're different areas, but that doesn't mean once we soften it, we won't be able to get through the whole thing. Um, it'll take time. But, and you never know, you can't say, oh, because this, this mat is smaller, we'll do this one first or this one. Sometimes the larger ones break faster than the smaller mats or the smaller knots like this one um, might take the longest. It might, that might be the hardest compared to this larger knot here. Um, and then we have these right here. Um, but they're all based, of course, and rooted here at the bottom. So once we kind of get in, we'll be able to break it through. And then again, we might be able to get in through the sides, as you can see, because underneath, her hair, it's matted right there. We have like a web of matting, a web of matting here on the sides as well. Um, lean back for me just a little bit here on the top. Um, but we're going to soak it very well. And then you never know, we might even get in through the sides here. But um, we'll see as we go. Okay. So we're probably just going to start, we're going to soak her head first with one full bottle. Uh, of again of the takedown remover and then of course we're going to need more than one but we soak it with one full bottle just to kind of saturate as much as we can um, it all might not penetrate in but we're going to do our best and that's why we heat as well so that the heating will help to some of the cream to get in so you just soak it all on I'm going here in between the areas here and I'm pushing the cream in as best as I can and of course the hair is pretty dry as you can imagine, because of the time. Um, so what we do is sometimes too, we gap in lean over for me this way a little bit. We go in where we have, where we can kind of stick our fingers in and we try and push some of the cream in there. So it can kind of ooze in underneath as much as you can. Sometimes it can be kind of painful for your client. So you've got to be careful when you're doing that. Lean this way for me a little bit. I'm going to try and get some product underneath here. product is pretty heavy so even though it seems like it's finished there's still some residue at the bottom of the bottle. So just kind of take your cover off and kind of tap her hair lightly. You don't want to beat her head with the bottle but see how product is still coming out just because it's kind of thick. Don't waste any. We want to get it all in there. A lot of times a client doesn't feel too much pain on the ends but when you start to get to the base of the hair, the roots, um, it will feel a little pain because, of course, the hair hasn't really been combed in a while, so it's going to be really, really sensitive. She has a lot of hair, so I'm going to soak the two that I've got here first and then go ahead and heat. You can never really put too much of this cream. It's just that it's really heavy. So you're just gonna have to shampoo a lot to get it all out, but it doesn't hurt. I mean, you know, if you say, oh, I put a lot, you really just can't never put a lot. The more you put, the easier it just makes your job. So it's no worries about that.
Sorry, I got some on your face. Sorry, okay, yeah. What is going on? Who's everywhere? Okay, that would be enough to get us started for now. Still go in after you kind of put it in, just try and massage it in as best as you can before you get ready to wrap in heat. Even as I'm massaging the cream in here, I'm seeing underneath that we've got some little gaps in here that I can still get some more cream in. That's what happens kind of when we start to get the moisture in here. Sorry, might be a little painful for the no, client to remember that. <laughs> And the good part about it is, underneath her roots, all of this is pretty much free hair, but it's a lot of new growth. Um, so at least it's not hard on her scalp, even though it's a, we've got a, a web shell of hair here. Um, but it's not as hard at the roots, so we know definitely once we get in, um, the roots might be a little matted, but it won't be hard. You know, which will make it a little less painful for the client, but not a whole lot, but just a little less painful. So then we're gonna take our wrap. And the purpose again of wrapping the hair is to heat it so that we can try and help some of the cream, the takedown cream to permeate in the hair, to kind of soak in the hair a little bit um, as best as it can. It might not do a lot, because of course we're not really in it, but every little bit helps to kind of get us started. We like to use a handheld dryer simply because you can maneuver. Some people like to sit under the dryer, um, and it's okay too, but with the handheld dryer, you can kind of get underneath certain areas and um, heat a little bit more in certain sections. And if you're do doing, um, and, and, and if you're doing a, 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 a client where um, part of the hair is, is um, tangled and, or matted and certain parts aren't, it's easier to kind of maneuver with a handheld dryer than sitting them under um, a dryer. Okay, so we finished drying, I mean not drying, heating, sorry about that. Um, to try and get some of the cream in and now we're going to start picking and again we're going to keep heating you continue to heat when you open up certain areas you put some more cream wrap it up and heat again um, and again the purpose of the heating is just to kind of help the cream get into the roots of the hair little by little for us to make it easier for us to detangle um, we're going to use of course a pin tail comb um, and what we do is basically in the beginning you really don't know where to start um, we follow the way the hair is matting, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that'll open up a way for you to start detangling. So the first part is kind of, you're just, you're just exploring. You're taking your rat tail comb and you're exploring, you're picking certain parts of hair, certain areas, like she has some hair here that's out. So I'm just picking it to see if it opens up in any way 
or what am I release? Their webs of hair, of course, uh, what well, well, it's hair that's kind of created a spider web over um, it. So sometimes you kind of have to break through those strands a little bit to get in and play around um, and explore just to see where you can kind of get into the hair. But it's not a rushing process. You take your time. There's no rush. Um, and you just pick through and see. And if you need to put more cream, you put more cream. More of the takedown cream, that is. Um, and you just continue. And then talk with the client. Ask them, you know, is it hurting in a certain area? Because you have many other areas you can go to. If it is, one area is kind of sore. Just go to another area. You see she has some hair hanging out here, so that's why I'm trying to see here where does this lead to does it lead to an area where I can probably break in find a point of entry um, for heavier chunks of hair you might want to use a thicker more of a plastic pencil comb rat tail comb but for, for, for strands and areas where it's really fine, where you have the webs, this is the best. The pintail is the best. Um, this can pretty much, the, the larger rat tail comb can pretty much just help um, break up and open up certain parts of hair. But for, for where it's kind of webbed in, you've got to use the metal pins up. It's more finer. And you can't really see sometimes, so you need something kind of like a pen to help you pick through. But for bigger chunks of hair where you can see more, then you can use a thicker um, pintail comb. Is it hurting you or anything? How does no, it, yeah. good. Okay. I can't really feel anything at all. Yeah, good. Yeah, you can't feel anything now, but I know once I get closer to the root, you will. Sometimes it might look like, oh my God, where am I going to start? Where I can't tell where it's going in, where it's coming out. It doesn't matter what it looks like, you know. You know it can get done. The key is to just continue to explore, pick through certain hair. Sometimes you might have hair that's wrapped from underneath on top. And by you picking little by little through the webs of hair, you might loosen that up. So don't worry about what it looks like. Sometimes things can look bad from the, from the outside, but really... They're great on the inside, meaning you can really get to it. Once you start, once you open it up and start working on it, it'll start easing up for your hairs, the strands of hairs will start coming through. Um, but yeah, it can look kind of scary, you know, when you're doing it and you don't know, and the client might even ask you, well, what, well how does it look? And you don't even know what to tell the client because you don't even know how it looks because you're trying to figure out, well, I can't even find a point of entry yet. Doesn't matter. Just keep exploring like I'm doing. I'm going through. I'm opening up. I'm looking. You're following the strands. You're following where the hair is going. You can kind of see, like she has a loop of hair here, a thick loop of hair here that's looped in. But then she has some few strands of, of hair that's kind of webbed around that. So if I can break through that and get through that, then I can pull out a loop of hair. And then little by little, you just keep doing that. And before you know it, you're weakening this matted mass. Matted hair doesn't have a, 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 a science to it. It's different for every head, but there's certain things that we can do to get the same result, even though it's a different head every time, a different type of matting, a different type of looping. And then depending on the hair texture, too, of a client, you know, if the hair is really curly, if it's more straight, if it's wavy, um, you know, depending if they have mixed textures, if it's coarse, if it's fine. 
as you can see, you see how I'm pulling out the hair here? You see? But that hair had a web around it. But I'm able to pull some out. And it's just... See, look, see that? See all that that came out? Now who would have ever thought when you first looked at that 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 was possible, that all that, all that big lump of hair was looped in there. So now I'm going to switch combs. I'm going to use a larger pintail comb because it's pretty much hair that you can kind of see where and there are no webs that you need to kind of break through. So and all that happens, that hair was just looped in. So all that happened was just looped in. Now that has led me to get into this. It's really dry in there, so I'm going to put some more um, takedown cream since I've opened it up a little bit. <clears throat> Beautiful hair that's coming out. See that? And the only way I got to that area is because I was just exploring and pulling strands of hair, picking hair. And I thought because she had hair already coming out here, that might be a, a faster way to start. But look what happened. This is opening up even faster, and this wasn't even out. So you never really know. You can't, you just can't judge it by what it looks like. You just gotta patiently take your time. Sometimes in between you'll have little hairs that are kind of braided on themselves, which is so weird, but it's amazing how it happens. Just continue to pull the strands out little by little. And if you get tired, take a break, you know, just take a break, come back, put a plastic shower cap over the client's head and come back. And sometimes when you take a break and come back, you'll see you'll see something that you didn't even see the first time. Sometimes it could seem like you're just looking at a web. Oh my gosh, I can't really see any openings yet. That's when it's good to just step back and come back to it. Where the hair, you will have hair that's shedding. We haven't really seen any yet, um, but then again, we haven't really gotten to the um, crux of, I mean, the, 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 the inner parts of her hair, of, the, of this matted area, but 
So we don't have any hair shedding yet, but you will have clients that will have hair shedding because imagine they haven't combed their hair for months at a time. Hair sheds every day, so it's okay. Doesn't mean they're gonna be bald headed or have bald spots. No, it's just that the hair has to shed out. Whenever you're also here, I always have a, a chair where you can sit in like a bar stool or something. You can sit in to kind of relax because you're going to get kind of tired sometimes of standing, but you also get tired of sitting. So um, I'm going to take a break and just slide my chair up and I'll be right back to continue to show you how we're going to get through this area right here. Okay, lean back for me a little bit. As you can see up underneath, right here at the nape of her neck, um, I was able to get hair out um, that I thought was connected into here, but it wasn't really. Um, I started picking underneath, and little by little, some of these hairs loosened up, and I was able to get hair out. So you can't really, again, just assume that everything is connected into one area. It's not. So I'm lifting up this this end kind of matted um, ball here, matted clump here, and I'm taking the comb and just pulling out little hairs as you can see because sometimes when you're trying to pick from the top if it doesn't really give you a lot of leeway or you can kind of get to a uh, a place where you're not really moving lift it up and start picking from underneath it and you'll see that hairs will start to come loose look you see how hairs are coming loose I'm picking from underneath and it, it's like it doesn't even make sense well why but that's just sometimes how the hair wraps around it might wrap around underneath but not really wrap around to the top of the matted hair so you lift it up and you pick underneath, you pick on top, you, you just pick wherever you can to loosen up the hair. And then after I pick up underneath, I kind of go back on top and start try to pick more hair from um, on top of the, the matted um, knot as well. You see? And the key really at the end of the day is just to loosen up hair wherever you can to weaken up this matted mass. That's it. It's not about, okay, I only got to do it one way. No, there's no one way um, because everybody's hair tangles differently and mats differently. The hair wraps around it differently. So the key is just to get hair out however you can, little by little, and weaken it. Um, you know, if you can pull hair around the sides, around the ends. And you can see, look, look, now look at the length of her hair that I'm pulling out. We haven't even gotten to the base yet. So she's got a lot of hair, you know? And imagine if she had cut all this off. I mean, what, 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 what would we, how would we even feel? Knowing that we could have saved all of this. Now, of course, that doesn't make it easy on a client because they, you know, they're going through a lot having to wait to get their hair de detangled, but professionally, but it's, it's, just, it's just so worth it. So you see all the hair that's coming out here? You see underneath? Now, right here, the nape of her neck is going to be a little painful, so you got to kind of take your time and, and look, none of this hair down here is connected to this. Isn't that amazing? None of it. Look how we're pulling it out. It's not even connected to it. This mass right here, I'm saying, I'm speaking of. I'm taking my time. Sometimes your arms can get kind of tired holding it up. Um, so, you know, just take a break and go to another area. But sometimes you get kind of like a rush. You get so excited because, oh, God, you got hair coming out. You know, it motivates you to keep going. And if you are kind of tired, 
It's like you're making leeway in a way that you didn't even expect. Like, why, you know, it, it would make more sense to just comb through here and then eventually you get down to the bottom and you pull the hair out. But look, it's not working that way. It's not even, this, this, it just, it's just not working that way. So you kinda gotta go with the flow and you can't get stuck on, well, we're just gonna do it one way. No, the hair didn't even get matted and tangled in one way. So, can't just assume there's just one way to detangle it. I'm gonna switch and use the other red tail comb because it's like I'm, I can get some bigger chunks of hair out. So, I'm gonna use this for a bit, this comb. And it's always good to have more than one of these combs because sometimes they break. A lot of them you can get for about three, four bucks. You can probably get a really firm, strong um, pintail for about six or seven, but you're really not going to even pay up to ten dollars for these combs. So, you know, you can get them for a dollar, but those are kind of really, really flimsy. Those break the little dollar ones. So, try to spend about three dollars or so, or four on, on one. See how this hair coming out? Great, isn't it? Now we did have some hair shedding, so you see it's a little bit of hair shedding, but compared to what we've got, I mean, it's great. So, sometimes here on the sides, like I'm getting hair coming out now on the sides of it. On this side, I was able to get a lot of hair on the sides. I'm gonna have you turn this way for me a little bit yeah, into the camera. So yeah, see on this side, I was able to get a lot of hair out on the sides on this side. It's just working, it's getting smaller. It's not as big as it was, this tip. So once we get through this, then we'll be able to start working on these little ones up here because they're much higher. But um, we'll do it that way. Okay, we're getting ready to start day two. Um, pretty much you've seen, this is what we were able to get out um, yesterday. And as we always train you, you braid the hair up um, after you're finished, just to separate the hair um, that you've detangled out um, from the total mass. And as you can see, she has um, a very nice length of, length of hair, um, but we only were able to just get the bottom um, part of the nape of the neck. Um, and so we wrapped it last night um, so that it could stay moist and I've already heated it a little bit um, just to kind of heat up the cream that we soaked on last night that um, we wrapped underneath the hair, I mean underneath the, the, the wrap. So as you can see too, this is a lot of, also a lot of the hair that we have um, that was out, but because it was still kind of connected, we just wrapped it all up together. So we, had, we got a lot of work done yesterday. Um, if you remember, we had pretty much a big mass right here, so most of this hair is from that. Um, so today we're going to work through, we're going to complete it today. We're going to now get into the, 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 the base pretty much of, of, of our hair, um, which will be a little bit easier because it's soft and it's mostly just the hair that's kind of matted in. Um, it's not hard. We've got a little dreadlock mass here we're going to get through. It's easy. We had one here yesterday. Got that out, just the, the, the base of it here. We got this one. And then we've got to get this one and then pretty much that's it. But those are easy because once we start getting up under here, we'll be able to get those from, break those in from inside out. Okay? So that's what we're going to work on today. <clears throat> um, I'm still going to use the, the larger um, rat tail comb because I'm really in the hair and I don't really need to pull a lot of small webs of hair. I've got a few right here, but I'll get to those <clears throat> soon. I'll go back and switch and use the pintail, the metal tip. Um, right tail comb as I'm using here. Um, and sometimes when you're when you're when you're breaking through um, the little strands and webs of hair that have kind of like crisscrossed um, across the hair, um, you might hear um, like the hair is breaking through. And yes, it is um, because you're lifting up that layer to get underneath. 
Um, so it's no need to worry and um, fret about anything. It's just hair that's basically going to have to shed out um, because it's created a web and you got to break through that to even get underneath to get to the hair that's um, just matted up underneath it. Um, it's, like, it's like the web of hair has created a cap and you've got to kind of break through that cap to get underneath um, where all the new growth is and all the hair that's just kind of laying underneath waiting to be freed so to speak. So if your client ever worries about that or says what's going on you can just explain it to them that way that that's, that's what you're trying to get through. You're trying to get through the cap. Um, yesterday when we were breaking through the matted knot we kind of peeled it apart like a banana and um, then the inside we just kind of picked in. We start picking through the hair from inside after we kind of peeled out the layer. So that helped a lot to get through that matted knot. And as you can see it's just kind of falling apart, flowing through easily. Hair is coming out. cream is really um, kind of really moistened the hair so it kept it soft all night which is helping we're still gonna have to add some more because once I get deep within where well, we can not really get the cream we'll need to moisturize some more with the takedown cream but pretty much this area was really soaked in and, and was you know kept wrapped all night so it stayed moist so the hair just coming out a little by little easy Sometimes you'll have a knot within a knot. So you'll break through a top layer and you'll have knots that are kind of where the hair just kind of intertwined on itself. Like here we have, I'm getting through the matted hair, but we still have a knot right here that kind of formed in between, underneath. So just take your time and just stop, you know, and just pick that apart slowly. Once you start getting the hang of it, um, you get into a, a zone where the hair is flowing with it and you're able to see where it's going and it actually be interesting to you. It'll be like you're um, learning because you're seeing hairs that went this way, that way. And um, it won't feel as if you're in a battle. You'll just be like, wow, I'm really going through this and I, I'm learning how this hair, her hair decided to mat. Tangle the which way the strands decided to go, you'll be able to see who decided to go to the left and who decided to go to the right. You see in there, so once we'll get in there, then we'll be able to get under and get this mat right here and get this one, but once we get it through there. So we're working our way up. here a little bit on this side and break some of these web strands because they won't let me get into the
As you can see, we basically got, um, we're basically halfway now. Um, we've got two braids here um, where we've got half of our head on this side. Lean back for me a little bit. Out. Then we've got this back here. And here we've got basically, um, we're almost done. I just got to get some of this hair out of here um, to make another braid. Um, turn for me this way down there. Um, her temples, we've just got to pull some of the hair out here slowly. Um, it's kind of painful. Well, not kind of, it is painful for the client. Um, and then we'll have three braids. So then we'll just have this left to do here. As you can see from the center right here, I'm going to start pulling hair out from in here more so to try and weaken it, the mass. Okay, basically we are finished. Um, this is the final um, day. Basically we did our hair, put it in, I just put it in four sections. This is the top section. Um, and then the ones behind it you've already seen. Um, and as you can see, she still has a lot of length on her hair. She will have to get the ends trimmed, but for the most part, um, she did a good job. She hung in there. It was, bit painful at times but she did it. Um, would you like to just say any final words just for our hairdressers to know the importance of detangling hair? <laughs> I'm just so grateful because I honestly didn't think it was possible and just to be helped like this to me is so amazing and you know I hope there are more hairdressers to help people like me out more than anything because it, it's really it's so much more of a relief and it's just like I just have this like overwhelming happiness right now. It's crazy. It's great. So I'm very thankful. Thank you so much, Sheila. Thank you so much.